Jesus gave his life a ransom yonder on Calvary. On Mount Calvary, cruel Calvary. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I welcome you to Encounter with the Truth here on Church of Christ TV. Mohammed, the Untold Story, Part 4. Who was Mohammed? Was he really the person Muslim preachers normally tell us about? That he was the greatest of all the prophets. Muhammad led an exemplary life. Muhammad was a champion of human rights. Was he really the person that Muslims are saying he is? In this lesson, we want to go through Islamic scriptures to find out who Muhammad really was. In fact, our purpose of doing this is to give you the other side of Muhammad that we don't hear from Muslims. After all, we are told in the Quran to search for the truth. In Surah 17, the Quran says, Wakulja al halku waza hal kalbata, innal batila kana zahuka. Truth has come and falsehood perish. Anytime truth arrives, falsehood is bound to perish. Jesus also told us in the Bible, in John 8, 32, that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So my dear viewer, our purpose is not to offend you. Our purpose is to furnish you with the truth so that you can make an objective conclusion about Muhammad, whether indeed he was the person that Muslims say he was or he is or what, according to the scriptures, he actually is. In the previous lessons, we have learned so many things. We saw that Prophet Muhammad was not exempted from sin. As Muslims are telling us today that Muhammad never sinned, he was holy prophet. We saw from the Islamic scriptures, both the Quran and the Hadith, that the prophet was a sinner like I and you. We also saw that the prophet was not sure of where he would spend eternity. Whether he would go to heaven or hell, he was not sure. We also learned that the prophet got certain revelations which were purely for his interest. We saw that at, at one time, um, he was bewitched or he was affected by a magic. And he also married the wife of his own adopted son after he, in a way, caused the divorce. This and many things were said about Prophet Muhammad in our previous lessons. And you can go and watch those lessons. In today's lesson, we want to look at two additional facts about Muhammad from Islamic scriptures. Remember, whatever we are going to share with you will not come from the Bible. Whatever we are going to share with you will come from the Quran. The Quran and the Hadith. These are the two main scriptures of Islam. So these are not facts we are cooking just to portray Muhammad in a bad light. The first fact we want to share with you today is that Prophet Muhammad was tormented by an angel. According to Muslims, this angel was angel uh, Gabriel, the Gabriel that we know from the Bible, whom in Arabic is known as uh, Jibril. How did Muhammad receive his revelation from this angel? Let me read to you what actually happened. Sahih Bukhali Volume 1, Book 1, Hadith Number 3. I'm going to read a part of the Hadith. I'm not going to read all. This is what it says. The angel came to him and asked him to read. The prophet replied, I do not know how to read. The prophet added, The angel caught me forcefully and pressed me so hard that I could not bear it anymore. He then released me and again asked me to read. And I replied, I do not know how to read. Thereupon, he caught me again and pressed me a second time. So I could not bear it anymore. He then released me and again asked me to read. But again I replied, I do not know how to read. Or what shall I read? Thereupon, he caught me for the third time and pressed me. And then released me and said, Read in the name of your Lord. Who has created all that exists has created man from a cloth read and your lord is the most generous then Allah's apostle returned with the inspiration and with his heart beating severe, severely 
Then he went to Khadija bin Kuwalid and said, Cover me, cover me. They covered him till so his fear was over. And after that, he told her everything that had happened and said, I fear that something may happen to me. I fear that something may happen to me. So my dear viewer, what we see in this hadith is that Muhammad actually was tormented by the angel. The angel caught him, commanded him to read something. Muhammad said, I do not know how to read because we know from Islamic tradition that Muhammad was illiterate. But it's so surprising that an angel from God didn't know that Muhammad was an illiterate and he has to even command him to read something. Muhammad has to tell the angel, has to tell the angel that I do not know how to read. Before the angel would know that this man does not know how to read. This is an angel Muslims are saying was sent from God to Muhammad. How can a true angel from the all-knowing uh, all God didn't know that Muhammad was an illiterate? That is even a question that you need to think about, my dear Muslim. Again, we see the angel putting fear in Muhammad, pressing Muhammad so hard and asking him to read something which he said he could not read. And we are told by Muslims, that this was the same angel that visited the characters in the Bible like Mary and Zacharias in the book of Luke. So let's check out the Gabriel that we know in the Bible to find out whether indeed he was the same Gabriel that visited Muhammad. Because this is what Muslims are saying, that this Gabriel was the same Gabriel that visited Prophet Muhammad. In Luke chapter 1, verse number 13, angel Gabriel was sent by God to Zacharias. And let's read what happened when angel Gabriel appeared to Zacharias. Luke chapter 1, verse number 13, this is what we are told. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. Hallelujah. So what did we see here? We see Angel Gabriel comforting Zacharias. Zacharias, do not be afraid. You see, anytime a human being encounter, anytime a human being encounters a spiritual being or an angelic being, you will become fearful. But what a true angel from God will do will be to comfort you. Like the way we see the angel Gabriel doing to Zacharias. Do not be afraid, Zacharias. Again, in Luke chapter 1, verse number 30, the same angel Gabriel was sent by God to Mary to announce the birth of Jesus to her. And let's listen to what happened. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Hallelujah. So we can say on authority that any time a true angel from God visit any person, the first thing the angel does is to comfort the person. We also see the same thing in the book of Daniel, chapter number 10, verse number 12. Daniel 10, 12. An angel appears to Daniel. And let's listen to what happened. Daniel 10, 12. Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand, and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. Hallelujah. So anytime an angel from God appears to any human being on earth, the first thing the angel does is to comfort the person. The person becomes fearful that the angel will comfort the person, will pacify the person. Is this what we see in the Quran, or is it what Gabriel or Jibril did to Muhammad when he visited him? No. In the case of Muhammad, we see this angel pressing Muhammad so hard and commanding him to read something which he could not read. An angel from God who didn't know that Muhammad was an illiterate. This is very questionable. 
my dear Muslim, think about this. And why would a true angel from God put fear in Muhammad? As we saw in the Bible, in all these three instances, in the, in, in the case of Zacharias, in the case of Mary, in the case of Daniel, we see God's angel comforting them. But in the case of Muhammad, this angel rather put fear in Muhammad. Muhammad has to run away from the cave. He will run away went to his wife and he was shouting cover me cover me and they covered him until his fear was over my dear muslim what we can say from this event is that this angel that visited muhammad cannot be the same gabriel that we know from the bible in fact this angel cannot be a true angel from god think about this a true angel from God should have known that Muhammad was an illiterate. A true angel from God should have comforted Muhammad instead of putting fear in Muhammad. But in the case of Muhammad, this angel praised Muhammad not just one time, three consecutive times. And Prophet Muhammad said, or Muhammad said, I could not bear it anymore. Then the last time, the angel mentioned the words that he should recite and Muhammad recited those words and according to Islamic theologians this is how Muhammad became a prophet so even from how he became a prophet there are so many questions about it an angel who didn't know that Muhammad was an illiterate an angel who has to praise the prophet who has to praise the person before he can command him to read something that he said he didn't know how to read my dear Muslim, think about this. The second information we want to share with you in this lesson is about how Muhammad died. How Muhammad died. We are told by Muslims that Muhammad got some uh, got sick and died out of that sickness. Is that actually what happened? Yes, Muhammad got sick, but what brought about that sickness? Let's find out from the hadith. In fact, from our reading of the Hadith, we see that Muhammad was poisoned with a meat. Muhammad was poisoned with a meat. And this meat actually affected his internal organs. And it was through this poison that he ate that led to his death in the year 632 AD. It says, Narrated Anas bin Malik, a Jewish brought a poisoned cooked sheep for the prophet who ate from it and she was brought to the prophet and he was asked shall we kill her he said no i continue to see the effect of the poison on the palate of the mouth of Allah's apostle muhammad actually was poisoned and what was that poison a poisoned cooked sheep a certain jewess that is a woman what happened was muhammad and his soldiers had conquered their city they have killed all the men and this woman among the uh, many women over there got furious and he had what she wanted to test whether muhammad indeed was a prophet from god in fact, when you read other narration, this is what we are told. This woman wanted to check whether Muhammad indeed was from God or not. So this was, a, this was her test. He cooked a sheep and poisoned it and gave it to the prophet. And Muhammad actually ate from it. And we are told in the hadith, this hadith, that this poison actually affected Muhammad. And according to Anas bin Malik, the effect of the poison was on the mouth of Muhammad. On the palate of the mouth of Muhammad. Let me read to you another narration about this poison event. From Sahih Bukhari, Volume 5, Book 59, Hadith number 551. Sahih Bukhari, Volume 5, Book 59, Hadith number 551. This is what we are told. Narrated Abu Huraira. When Kaiba was conquered, a cooked sheep containing poison 
was given as a present to Alex Apostle. I take it again. When Kaibal was conquered, a crude ship containing poison was given as present to Alex Apostle. So Muhammad was poisoned by a meat. Let me read to you another, uh, another event of this poisoning issue. How did Muhammad die? How did Muhammad die? We are told by Muslim that, oh, he just got sick. But what caused that sickness? Let's listen to Aisha, the mother of all believers. This is her title. Aisha is the mother of all believers. In fact, Aisha was the most beloved wife among all the wives of Muhammad. This is Aisha's narration concerning this poisoning issue. Sahih Bukhali, Volume 5, Book 59, Hadith number 713. Sahih Bukhali, Volume 5, Book 59, Hadith number 713. Let's listen to Aisha. Narrated Aisha, the prophet in his ailments, in which he died, used to say, Oh, Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Kaiba. And at this time, I feel as if my aorta is being cut from that poison. I'll take it again. The prophet in his ailments in which he died used to say, Oh Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Kaiba. And at this time, I feel as if my iota is being cut from that poison. So my dear viewer, how did Muhammad die? According to this hadith, in the ailment that Muhammad died, this is the confession that he made, that Aisha, I can still feel the poison that I ate from the food that was given to me at Kaibal. When we conquered that city, killed all the Jews there, I can still feel the effect of the poison. So Muhammad actually was poisoned. And it was actually this poison that led to his death in 632 AD. So contrary to the vehement Muslims claim that prophet, the prophet just got sick and died, this was not natural sickness. It was actually a poison. This poison destroyed all his internal organs, which led to his death eventually now how does this affect muhammad's claim of being a prophet from god let me share with you something which allah said in the quran a revelation that muhammad claimed that was given to him by allah in surah 69 surah 69 ayah 44 to 46 this is what Muhammad said Allah gave to him concerning his prophetic ministry. Surah 69, Ayah 44 to 46. And if the messenger were to invent any sayings in our name, if the messenger, that is Muhammad, were to invent any sayings in our name, we should certainly seize him by his right hand. And we should certainly then cut off the artery of his heart. So this is what Allah said. The Allah of the Quran, this is what he said about Muhammad. That should Muhammad invent any sin in his name. Should Muhammad caricature any false doctrine or any false statement in the name of Allah. Allah said that he will seize Muhammad by his right hand and cut his artery or the aorta. And, and when Muhammad was about to die, the very thing that Allah said will happen to him if he preached falsehood in his name was what actually happened to Muhammad. Muhammad admitted that he can feel his iota is being cut off. The, confirming the very thing Allah said he would do to him should he preach any false falsehood in his name. My dear Muslim, I know this is very big for you. I know this is so uh, new in your uh, uh, mind. And we want you to think about this deeply. And in our previous lesson, we learned that Muhammad at once 
admitted that he recited certain passages of the Quran which were not from Allah, which were given to him by Satan. And he even recited Surah 22, Ayah 52 to justify himself. And this is what Allah said he would do to Muhammad if Muhammad should preach any false doctrine in his name. Allah said he would cut off his heart. And when Muhammad was about to die, he admitted that he can feel that his iota is being cut from that poison. Showing that Muhammad actually preached falsehood. Muhammad actually preached a false doctrine. And as such, was killed by Allah by cutting his iota or by cutting his right artery. As Allah said in Surah 69, Ayah 44 to 46. So contrary to the claims of Muslims and their preachers and their sheikhs and apologies that Muhammad died a natural death, Prophet Muhammad actually didn't die a natural death. He was poisoned. Even though he didn't die instantly, but that poison worked against him, destroyed all his internal organs and led to his death in the year 6, 32. We have seen that the angel that visited Muhammad could not be a true angel from God. For true angel from God, true angel from God, don't torment people. True angels from God comfort people anytime they appear to them. But the Jibril that appeared to Muhammad didn't do that. The Jibril of the, uh, of the Hadith or the Jibril of Islam actually tormented Muhammad, put fear in him. Muhammad had to run away to his wife and beg his wife to cover him with a cloth until his fear went away. My dear viewer, all this information are in your own scriptures. The Quran and the Hadith, the Hadith are here. We are not making them up. Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Bukhari, the authentic life report about Prophet Muhammad. In fact, this is the second most authentic book in Islam. After the Quran, after the Quran, Sahih Bukhari, all the nine volumes, we have it here in our uh, library. And these are the information we learned from it about Prophet Muhammad. It's our prayer that this information you have been given from this show would cause you to think deeply about some of these things so that you can make an objective conclusion about Muhammad, whether indeed he was truly sent by the true God or he was an imposter. It's our prayer that by doing that, God will show you the truth. God will show you his light for you to come and know him better and have his salvation. We have seen that Prophet Muhammad was a sinner like I and you. We have seen that Prophet Muhammad was not sure of where he will spend eternity, whether he's going to heaven or whether he's going to hell. We have seen that Muhammad had certain revelations which were purely for his interest. We have seen that Muhammad himself married the, adopted, the, the wife of his own adopted son. We have seen that Muhammad, Muhammad was bewitched. He came under a magical spell which put a great doubt on his claim of being sent by God. But how can a true prophet be affected by a magic? And he even said in the Quran that no servant of God can be affected or can be tormented, tormented by Satan. But we see Muhammad in the Hadith being influenced by a magical spell by one Jewish man known as Labed bin al assad All these facts should convince you that this man cannot be a man from God. It's our prayer that you think deeply about this. Think objectively about this. And come and know the truth of God. We at the encounter with the truth are inviting you to consider the person of Jesus Christ. We are inviting you to consider the person of Jesus Christ. This is what Jesus Christ said to all of us in the book of Matthew, chapter number 11. 
verse number 28 to 30. Matthew chapter number 11, verse number 28 to 30. This is what Jesus said. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lonely in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the invitation of Jesus Christ to you, my dear Muslim. I know somehow you are offended, but it, that wasn't our intention. Our intention in this show was to serve you with the truth. We know sometimes truth hurts, yes, but it is better for us. It's better for us to torment you or to frustrate you with the truth than to pamper you with lies. Jesus is inviting all of us to come unto him for rest so that at the end of the time we are all going to have eternal salvation. Jesus was very sure of salvation. Jesus has promised a great salvation to anyone that will believe in him. He wants you to believe in him as the son of God who came down from heaven to pay for our sin. Even in your Quran, he is one of the prophets. In the Quran, Jesus is coming again. In the Quran, Jesus is now seated at the right hand side of God. Are you still going to follow Muhammad? A prophet who was a sinner like I and you? A prophet who was not sure of where you spend eternity? A prophet who gives law and later grants himself exemptions from the same law? A prophet who didn't set a good example for, uh, for us by getting married to Exesia, old girl? Think about some of these things. Think about some of these things. In that prayer, that you put your faith in Christ alone, repent from your sins, and give yourself to Jesus Christ in baptism. As he said in Mark chapter number 16, verse number 16, that he who believes and is baptized shall be saved, and he who does not believe will be condemned. We don't want you to be condemned. Follow Jesus Christ as your Savior. Follow Jesus Christ as your Lord. Follow Jesus Christ as your everything. And we promise you, you will never be disappointed. Don't follow a man. Don't follow a prophet who is still in the tomb, who is still dead, and who needs your peace. Every day in your five daily salads, you ask for the peace of God to be upon him. Such a person can't take you to God. We invite you to follow the person of Jesus Christ. He's so gracious. He's so loving. Wherever Jesus rules in this world, there is peace. Come and have the peace of Jesus Christ. We, from the Churches of Christ, invite you to fellowship with us so that you can get many information about Jesus Christ and what he has done for our salvation. God bless you for watching and bye-bye. Salvation has been brought down, oh glory, praise the Lord.